What's going on guys? Jurassic here. In this guide, I'm going to be showing you guys how to customize your keyboard. That way you can have a keyboard just like this on side of your screen. So we're going to download the NOH board rewrite. This is the newest version, so we just click on it. It's going to download the zip file down here. Now, I do recommend before you actually unzip it to go into your desktop and make like its own separate folder. So for example, I saved it to my desktop as the virtual keyboard. But basically, all I gotta do is open this bad boy up. It's going to pull up your downloads page here. So if you just click on the downloads, just right click on it and extract to the folder that you created. All right, so now that you got all that pulled up, you want to actually activate the plugin here. So just so you guys are aware, you are going to have to have this on in the background. So every single time you launch this application, you're going to have to click install anyway, it's going to pop it up. Now on your screen, you're going to just see a blue box here. So if you right click on it, you're able to click on load keyboards and then you're able to get something like this. This is my MMO keyboard that I set up. Basically, we're able to customize it. So I got my thumb buttons. You can see the direction of the mouse and everything. It's actually pretty accurate. I like having the keys green since they stand out and I chroma key the blue. That way everything is just completely clear and then lower the opacity some. So I'll show you guys how to do that in OBS. But to make this keyboard, we are going to be focusing on like a FPS sort of style. So they do have a couple of presets. So they got the game legacy, the burning fish. This one's nice, but it doesn't have the actual mouse thing. And that's the thing that we're actually looking for. So we've got the Haley Hasselon, and I will show you guys how to customize the font as well. So we've got the normal keyboard, we got the Quake. Quake's kind of cool because you can still see the mouse and it has majority of the stuff that we need for like a first person shooter. So if you just wanted to do it the easy way, the Quake definitely could work out. But the one that you guys saw before was actually from the Burning Fish collection and it's under the US underscore Intel mouse move. So if you guys like this little mouse wheel here and we can customize the buttons, you can do it that way. I'm going to customize another keyboard with the Intel mouse over here, mainly because I really like the fact that the mouse and we can actually differentiate everything. So first of all, if you want to remove anything, we can just sort of crop it out. So you want to right close that out. You want to right click, click start editing. Now you're able to remove any keys that you're not doing. We're going to be doing a first person shooter. So a lot of this stuff will be removed. So all you have to do is right click on it and you should see remove element. That's going to automatically delete it. I'm going to go ahead and crop out everything that we don't need. And then I will show you guys how to actually add things in and customize the button colors and all that stuff. Now, when you guys are moving stuff around, you can actually use the arrow keys to actually bring everything down and notice this little pink border here. You can actually line everything up so you see like a little bit of a gap and that's how you know it's like perfectly lined up just like that. So that way you can sort of line all the keys up like it was supposed to be there from the beginning anyways. We're just going to include all the way up to F5 just in case people have like a stream deck or something and they use the function keys. That way, you know, it looks all nice and complete. So another thing to keep in mind is all this stuff over here on the right, you actually don't need. So if you just move the arrow key, it props it out for us inside of the application. So before you even go to OBS, you won't even see that anyway. So that's why I didn't bother moving that stuff. All right. So now we're going to work on trying to make our mouse look as nice as possible. So if you click on the box here, you can see in this corner that it actually turns like a little orange box. You can actually click and drag and make like an actual thing that looks like a mouse. So I like to actually drag it in and just sort of emulate what a mouse would probably look like. So I'm roughly around there. You can right click and go into element properties and get rid of the text and then just click accept. Since we're making it look like a mouse, we don't necessarily need that stuff. So we want to crop that out. We're not going to worry about changing the colors or anything yet because we will be doing that in a later on step. And before we actually finish this off, I am going to show you guys how to add in a extra key in case you need to add in like an extra thumb to button or something or another. So let's see. So we'll go to you. And this is just for mouses that have a thumb key. We're going to keep this over here on the side. That way we don't forget that. And we want to sit here and just drag it in. There you go. And then click off. As long as you're no longer selected inside the border, it's actually going to move around like normal. So let's see. In OBS, we can crop out some stuff, but majority of the height wise is going to be standard. So we're not able to do too much in that regard. So I'm going to try to keep this relatively basic. So this is going to be your thumb one button. So if you want to add a thumb key, it's going to be in a different setting than like a typical keyboard setting. So you want to right click and go over add element, go to mouse key. Now then you're going to right click on it to go into element properties. 
and you can see Holland's left button automatically. So you got X2 and X1. So if you click on X2 and then click on your thumb button, so X2 is going to be the top button on your mouse. X1 is going to be the one on the bottom. And same with the circle, you can just click and drag from like the size itself. So if you want to make it so it's nice and like easy to look at, you can do something like that. And I think this is going to majority of the keys. I have this keyboard set up a little bit more buttons than what your typical game would be just in case people play like the division or something that way you can actually see like the map and things like that but you can go even harder and just do WASD technically with the mouse. Right, so now that we got the basics done, if you guys need to add in the extra keyboard key, all you have to do is right click, go to add element, add a keyboard key. Now this button's going to be completely unlabeled, so you have to label it yourself. Click on element properties. It's going to pull up this list here. Now, if you click on detect, it's going to automatically find whatever key you're pressing. So for example, I'm going to click the end key. It's going to find code 35. All you have to do is click add and now every single time we click the end key it's going to light up and if you want to actually label it as well all you can go back into is element properties and this is where you could add in the text for example so we'll have the end key labeled boom every single time we click on end it's going to be lighting up we don't necessarily need it though so we are going to go and remove the element now if you want to customize the buttons all you have to do is go over to keyboard style this is where it's going to show you the keyboard's background, we're going to keep this the default. But if you notice what loose key versus press key, loose key is going to be the default key without any buttons being clicked. We're going to change all their background color to black. So just click on this little square here and black's going to be the bottom red. Yeah. Now we're, I'm going to change the text over here to green because I like the way it looks. So if we do that, it's going to have this little effect here. Now we are going to change the mouse score wheel too. So we're going to do black for you and green for the speed. Speed's basically going to be every single time you move around. Just like so. Now it does actually affect how fast you're moving your mouse. So if you have your mouse jacked up super high, it's going to always be green just so you guys are aware. And you also change the outline width if you want like a little bit thicker circle. All right, so now that we got that set up, see where it says pick a font? If you go to defont.com, you can actually pick up your own fonts. For example, I recommend using the Viper Nora because it seems to work out really good. You can do regular, oblique, bold, or bold, oblique. And we're going to go with bold. And you can even change the font size if you want it a little bit bigger. That way it's nice and easy to see. I got this on 12 right now. Now, if you guys notice, there is a press key over here. So if we press Q, for example, right now, it's going to light up white. We don't necessarily want that. So we are going to go back inside of here. So if you want the key to just look like it has like a very slight glow i recommend doing like a little bit of like a bluish hue and keeping the font green now you are going to sit here and need to change the text down here as well so hold on we want to match the same green click on the font and it's not going to remember which one you pick so you just have to scroll all the way down so once you head over to viper nora bold 12 is what we did so we'll do that so now every single time we hit q it's going to be like this little green effect and that's how you guys customize the button colors, the font. Technically, you can change the image if you like go inside of Adobe Photoshop, like make your own keys. But once you're done with that, click accept. Now, whatever you do, do not actually exit out of this application yet. There is one more thing that we need to do. So to have it so this application automatically always pulls this up, we're going to right click, go over to save definition as, click save as, and you want to make your own category. So we'll call it Jurassic. BS keyboard will be good. Click save. Now you want to right click, click save style, save as. And you got a default here. We're just going to call it Jurassic as well. And click save. So now whenever we go over to load keyboard, we should see global default is Jurassic. So we wanted that extra category here just because if you didn't have it like that, you would be looking at like this gray thing. But now it's going to automatically pull up this list every single time. So a lot of the buttons have letters and everything, which makes it a lot easier to see. So we are going to change up a little bit of things. I completely forgot about this part. Sorry, guys. So for the keyboard, if you right click and go into element style, 
you can click overwrite default style here and we're going to manually change a couple of these that way they're a little bit easier to see so i'm going to go with this box right here for everything that doesn't actually have a label on it so i'm going to go and click accept that way we can actually see it since we're turning everything so dark it's not actually going to be showing just the standard black key very well with the transparent background, it's hard to see the ring around the mouse, so we want to go over to Element Style and bump up this little default thing to 5. That way the ring's a little bit thicker, and it actually doesn't look too thick when it's actually shown on OBS. Alright, so click on the plus sign down here and you want to do a Windows Capture to name it whatever you want, for example, Keyboard. Alright, so it's going to look up something along these lines here. You can decide if you want the Capture method automatic, we're just going to click OK, keep it as the default things. So one thing that we are going to do is you want to right click, go over to filters, click on the plus sign. We're going to add in a chroma key and we are going to filter out the blue. There we go. And you can bring the similarity that way. It doesn't show as much. So you can sort of have it like a transparent this way, or you can actually do the opacity. But something along those lines actually doesn't look too bad. So if you want to bring in the box even more, if you hold Alt, you can sort of drag it in and see how it turns to like this little green shape. That's what you're looking forward to, drag it in fully. And then if you want to just position the keyboard, technically you can just drag the things in, something like a serial, and every single time you click. Now notice nothing's actually being, hold on, I'll put it up here, that way it's a little bit easier to see for now. But notice how nothing's actually looking like the mouse is keeping track and everything. That's because it was minimized. Now that it's not minimized, it'll work. So you can actually drag this over to the side and then have OBS on top of that application. And sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't. So I do recommend if you have the option to have it just above everything else, that way it'll always pick it up. All right, so now that we got the keyboard added, you guys can see that there's sort of like this kind of weird like mouse trail and everything that we don't necessarily want. Basically, this application brings in a little bit bigger size than what it can. So that's why we're going to hold Alt. So we just want to crop all that extra stuff out. We have it set so it's transparent, so you shouldn't see any of that and stuff. So that's just a little bit of extra. We'll click it around something like around here. And now that the application NOH is on top of OBS, we can see everything. If you click on Q, you can see how it sort of lights up. It's not too bright or anything in your face. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.